Welcome to this presentation. The topic is pediatric pharmacology, and we'll first review some physiological differences between pediatric animals and adults that may impact uh, drug therapy. Then we will go over what information we have available regarding the safety and efficacy of particular drug classes in pediatric patients in order to facilitate uh, clinical decisions. I thought it might be useful to start by defining what we mean by pediatric. So in some sources, a pediatric animal is anything less than six months of age, but in others, it's subdivided into the neonatal period, which is zero to two weeks old, infant, which is two to six weeks, and then pediatric period, which is six weeks to up to three to six months. And just for reference, in people, a neonate is up to a, about a month old, infant is a month to two years, and then pediatric is two years to I think 12 years. So obviously the timeline is a little more compressed in dogs, which makes sense with the shorter lifespan. But those boundaries in general do correspond to some major physiological changes. Um, so what's the difference between a neonatal animal and an adult animal in terms of factors that might impact choice of drugs, or even between a pediatric animal, six to 12 weeks old, and an adult? Well, we can see that puppies and kittens are altricial mammals, and so are not quite done when they're born. That's obvious from the outside. Their eyes and ears are closed. They're non-ambulatory in contrast to a precocial mammal like the guinea pig in the lower right. But they're also unfinished on the inside when they're born. So there are some major organ systems that still have to undergo a fair amount of development uh, prior to being fully functional. This slide illustrates the spectrum of differences from a physiological standpoint between a neonate and an adult in terms of things that might affect drug absorption, distribution, metabolism, and excretion. So this group on the top here are primarily going to impact absorption and bioavailability of orally administered drugs. Um, the larger water to fat ratio of neonates is gonna affect drug distribution and plasma concentrations. Uh, things like the immature sympathetic nervous system, which leads to a reliance on heart rate for perfusion, will impact choice of drugs that affect the autonomic nervous system. And then obviously the reduced hepatic metabolic capacity and reduced renal clearance in neonates will affect the excretion and the half-life of certain drugs. So we'll look at some specific examples of these on the next few slides. So in terms of factors that affect drug absorption, obviously irregular and generally slower GI motility in neonates is gonna sometimes lead to lower peak plasma drug concentrations. Um, neonates have a near neutral gastric pH that gradually becomes more acidic over the first week of life. So weakly acidic drugs like the macrolides are not going to be protonated in a neonate as they would in an adult and so it would be easier for them to cross lipid bilayers so they might be more, uh, absorption might be enhanced in the neonate compared to the adult. Um, in contrast, drugs like the fluoroquinolones and the tetracyclines that can be chelated by divalent cations such as calcium in the diet might not be absorbed as well in neonates because of their milk diet. So in general, parenteral absorption is probably more reliable in younger patients, uh, neonatal patients particularly. Although if you're talking about IM or sub-Q administration, then absorption can be compromised by dehydration or by hypothermia, which neonates are more prone to because of their, more, their difficulty regulating their temperatures and the higher body water content. So obviously correcting these factors is going to be important for maximizing absorption in very young patients. And if we look at an example of a problem with oral bioavailability in young animals, this is a study of the pharmacokinetics of enrofloxacin in kittens from two to eight weeks of age. On the top, we have plasma concentrations when the drug was administered IV, and on the bottom, when it was administered orally. And you can see that especially in the younger groups of kittens, the oral administration does not result in very high plasma concentrations. Again, this is probably because the enrofloxacin is being chelated by the calcium in the milk diet in these neonates. So moving on to drug distribution, probably the biggest factor that affects drug distribution in neonates and pediatrics is the fact that they are mostly water when they're born. So about 80% body water content at birth, and that decreases to about 60% in the adult. There's a, obviously increase in a reciprocal increase in body fat during that period of time. And the result is that if you administer a water-soluble drug to a neonate, then you will end up with a higher volume of distribution, so it will distribute into more body water, and that will result in a lower plasma concentration because there's less drug to stay in the intravascular compartment. 
So you might have a lower plasma concentration than what you would expect in an adult. The opposite is going to be true in fat-soluble drugs. With, in neonates, the volume of distribution will be smaller because there's not as much fat for the drug to distribute into. So you might have a higher than expected plasma concentration. So the next few slides have some animations that just illustrate this concept. So at the top we have equation plasma concentration is a result of the dose of drug distributed into a particular volume, uh, whether that's total body water, which is 0.6 liters per kilogram, or whether it's just the plasma compartment, or whether it's body water and other tissues. If we say these X's are water-soluble drug, and this central compartment here is the intravascular space, and then the blue is body water, or extracellular fluid, then the left here represents an adult, and the right represents a neonate with a larger volume of extracellular fluid. We administer this water-soluble drug, then fewer molecules of it are going to stay in the plasma compartment in the neonate because they'll more of them will distribute out to body water. So you'll get a lower plasma concentration in a neonate than you will in an adult. Now, if we add fat to the equation, which is these brown bars, there's more body fat in an adult than in a neonate. If we say the X's are now a fat-soluble drug, they distribute into the fat in both the adult and the neonate. Then in this case, the neonate is going to have a higher concentration of drug in the plasma because less of it is able to go out into the fat compared to an adult. So if we look at, again, ampicillin, which is water-soluble, and then rifloxacin, which is lipid-soluble, then it might be easier to understand these concepts. So this is pharmacokinetics of ampicillin given IV or IO to kittens. And looking at the pharmacokinetic parameters on the next page, the volume of distribution in a kitten is much larger for ampicillin than what it would be in an adult. So a kitten is 0.9 liters per kilogram, so greater than total body water, versus 0.167 liters per kilogram in an adult. So you'll have a lower plasma concentration of ampicillin in a kitten than what you would in an adult. So you might have heard a recommendation to reduce drug dosages in young animals, sort of in general across the board. Obviously, that's not necessarily appropriate um, for ampicillin or certain other water-soluble drugs. This is our slide again of enrofloxacin, which is a more lipid-soluble drug in neonatal kittens. And we're just looking at the top row of figures now. The IV plasma concentrations or plasma concentrations after IV administration in kittens from two weeks to eight weeks of old, eight weeks of age. We can see that the plasma concentrations decrease over time, uh, even though the kittens are receiving the same dosage of drug. So why is this? Looking at the volume of distribution, we can see that that increases over time as the kittens develop more body fat compared to body water. So there's more fat for the drug to distribute into, which leads to a lower plasma concentration in the older kittens.